but what i understood was if if we keep working consistently uh we'll get uh, what we uh, look for uh, some way or the other we'll be rewarded hi everyone my name is anuj jindal welcome to my channel today i have pavitra with me who has cleared nabard 2021 examination this was her first attempt at nabard but uh, she has had a long stint of failures so her interview her tips are going to be very very relevant if you are an aspirant preparing for 2022 nabard okay uh, to tell briefly about pavitra she has uh, she passed out from college in 2016 she has not done any masters or any higher studies after that and she had been preparing for upsc for quite some time this was as i said her first attempt at nabard and a fruitful one we will be talking about uh, a lot of problems that we as aspirants as students face when we get to see failures in our lives especially in government examinations first of all congratulations pavitra on this success thank you sir uh let us start right uh, you know directly dive into the string of questions that we feel are important from an aspirant from an achiever like you uh the first question that i have is uh how did you make sure that uh, you were prepared enough for nabard examination because whatever you studied for upsc must have helped because but uh, a lot of students feel that, that nabard is too technical so did the knowledge of upsc come in handy if yes how and uh, how can upsc aspirants make use of an opportunity like this yes sir uh except for few topics almost uh, most of the topics uh, we will be covering in civil service examination and but the thing is when i uh, looked into the previous year question papers to orient myself for the nabard exam specifically uh i found that we have to do a little bit focus on years the amount of rupees allocated for a scheme or some other facts that we usually don't concentrate in civil service examination so from the previous year question papers i took the guidance to uh concentrate on those facts and uh, though it is my first attempt in uh, nabard my five years of preparation and the accumulated static knowledge definitely did help me uh, in all the levels uh and other thing is that i got used to that uh, elimination strategy by practicing civil service examination so though this agriculture and rural development uh, had technical question but uh, from the questions and the options given i was able to eliminate and uh, get to the answer the other thing that i found was uh, the strategy uh, some questions like fisheries the name of a specific fishes i was not able to get those answers so but uh, i was able to analyze i given so much of questions this would be correct so i need not attend this question so uh, even skipping this will not affect me so that question i was able to leave so all these uh, things i got from the upsc civil service preparation and i applied all these so uh, so technical things i was able to overcome with these strategies so you're talking about the knowledge that you accumulated in your 5 years of upsc prep now this does not mean that students who are not preparing for upsc cannot get through of course what this means is that you have to be at this level in your preparation to make sure that you are confident enough comfortable enough to clear nabard examination so student who is solely preparing for nabard of course you have to prepare more in depth because students like pavitra already have that much of knowledge accumulated over time through their preparation of upsc talking about the next question pooja ma'am uh, you had a question in mind yes uh, i was thinking about the elimination strategy only and i think she is a great example for all those students who think that they can't appear in this exam uh, just because they do not have any agriculture background she uh, briefly discussed about the elimination strategy and i think it's all depends on your strategy on your uh, method of preparation on the accumulated knowledge that you have in the past that would uh, work in your favor while you uh, give this exam so i think she is a great example and pavitra uh, if if you could uh, focus uh, on it a little bit more that would be very beneficial for the students as well 
yes ma'am uh, certain questions uh, especially from agriculture field uh, i found that most of that uh, could be eliminated uh, from the hints that was given in the question itself for example certain questions in prelims like the process that was involved in uh, fish fishing fisheries uh, i didn't have any idea about fisheries because that topic animal husbandry topic was not at all covered in civil service but from the question itself from the option i was able to get uh, okay these are all the certain stages but the question asks asks for some other things so the question itself had hint uh, i don't remember all the questions but still many of the questions in agriculture i was able to uh, el- uh, do it by uh, the elimination strategy for example the question on uh, uh, animal husbandry that dealt with the uh, chopping uh, the feed for cattle i still don't remember the technical name but when i was, a- was able to see the question i was able to eliminate so that is that is what i did especially for agriculture since i didn't have much knowledge on that uh that's what helped and me. also in the ard section not all questions are technical you will find i guess seven to eight questions were from the schemes only that was related to agriculture or the rural development areas yes. so i think student need not to fear about that because uh, a fair share of the question also comes from the uh, scheme portions uh, which you already prepare for your esi section Right, so yes, that also ma'am. come in handy for most of the students who actually do not have any agriculture background. Yes, ma'am. I also uh, from the previous year question papers, I got that okay. So much of schemes is being focused. So whatever schemes I have been preparing, uh, I just saw how what sort of questions are asked, and I focused on those aspects accordingly. So that was also helpful. and elimination questions were useful in certain technical parts so everything cannot be done completely by that strategy but wherever it's possible we can prepare but uh, when we find new questions we just don't have to leave it as such thinking that we have not prepared this but we can try to eliminate that that we can get it by practice i think we can when we practice more questions now i think we will get that right right absolutely correct that reminds me uh, pavitra also very important uh, point that my guru used to tell me uh, in my older days uh, that you spend uh, if, if you're sitting for let's say upsc or nabard or rbi you spend 2 minutes on reading the question and you spend 30 seconds on answering the question uh, normally students tend to do otherwise they spend 30 seconds on reading the question and then they sit with it and try and answer it and you know end up spending 2 3 minutes even 5 minutes on one question so i think i think that's where elimination comes in handy because if you've not read the question enough you cannot answer it you cannot eliminate the wrong choices uh moving to the next one you were talking about uh, how you made sure that you had uh, you know enough questions enough correct questions enough uh, unanswered questions to make sure that uh, you know your accuracy does not get affected your score does not get affected what kind of role does presence of mind play in the final examination even if you don't know about the topic how did you make sure that you had enough presence of mind uh, to make sure that you answered unknown questions correctly uh, yes sir i think i got it by practice over long time i think i'm been practicing it for 5 years so only because of the practice i got that so uh so i was able to i had the confidence okay i have done these uh, questions uh, well so if i go for the other things i would end up getting negative marks so it is better to stop with this so i do it uh, by mm, i i don't do it at a stretch question line by line but uh, first i complete questions that i am very comfortable sure then again i come i go for elimination of uh, when i have been able to do two or eliminate two options i do that then i see whether they i am done with sufficient questions then if not i would go and i play uh, think over more again where there is any hint in the question or not and so i do that way so by practice i did that okay amazing so you're saying that you uh, created this we can call it strategy or we can call it uh, through practice it came that you would first attempt questions that you were 100% certain about and then you came back to the questions where you had let's say doubt between two or three options am i right yes sir yes 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 you were also talking about uh, identification of important topics after phase 1 when you realized 
where were you going wrong uh, where did you go wrong in your phase 1 examination so how did you go about that how did you make sure that you were able to fill those holes uh is that from uh prelims prelims what i learned was that uh the questions from economic and social issues i was very comfortable because i had the knowledge from my preparation but agriculture and rural development um, i uh, i cannot take a chance again in may so i uh, wanted to prepare that so uh, specifically topics like animal husbandry was completely new uh, but other topics where i had a base from upsc like water conservation soil and all that uh, so i uh, focused on the syllabus and and uh, i uh, what to say i oriented all the knowledge that i had with civil service and with the syllabus but for animal husbandry i did uh, what specific youtube videos uh, the names of the breeds and their characteristics the questions were of that sort in from the previous year question i got that so uh, how to learn all that so i prepared uh, in such a manner uh, that's what i did and for descriptive i prepared uh, every word of the syllabus i uh, i made sure that i am able to go uh, uh, the merits and demerits of every topic that was in the syllabus so uh, i i did not take up more books for preparing for agriculture uh, but i focused on the syllabus words and uh, i um, pre- analyzed myself what sort of questions can be asked like micro irrigation or msp all that was uh, it was we we can have a guess that so, that such sort of questions will be asked so i did that and also i took a example from the rdi previous year descriptive papers so since a uh, syllabus so i got an idea of what sort of questions would be asked so uh, i made up it would be a general question not very technical uh, so i did that that cross breeding was one question that was technical uh, but i think that would be uh, difficult for every most of the students who applied in a generalist stream so while uh, typing the answers also i made sure that i completed all the answers that i know very well and uh, finally i allocated uh, some time for cross breeding i did not skip that question as such but whatever uh, i with the knowledge that we had in school lessons i had biology at least till 10th we were read something about that so i was able to uh, give a decent answer but i did not bluff around uh i wanted to make sure that uh, that question uh, that answer does not spoil the quality of my other answers i don't want to give a bad impression so whatever i knew well i i gave for that answer also so, but i uh, kept it to the last so i wanted to compensate for the loss of that question in the other answers so i gave quality answers in other uh, questions you know this uh, this this gives me a very good idea about the presence of mind that you used the smart study uh, that you used after phase 1 specifically to make sure that you were well prepared for the important topics and the fact that uh, so, so so what happens is right now we have we are having live sessions with a lot of rbi aspirants especially for descriptive and what i see is uh, students end up writing what they know instead of writing what is being asked In, in a lot of questions and that happens in all the examinations we are so excited about writing so if 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 we are not very certain about an answer we end up writing whatever we know to impress the examiner but that does otherwise but i think in cross breeding question you made sure that you did not spoil the mood of the examiner by writing what was asked uh, in probably very simple terms rather than answering what you knew uh, very well done i think uh, students who are going to aspire this year have an important lesson to learn here uh, that uh, you have to make sure that you are using the time that you have smartly uh, in the examination as well there will be questions to throw you off how do you deal with those questions in the examination will determine your success or failure moving forward interview must have been very interesting for you so uh, what kind of questions were asked given that you had a big gap did they start with that and uh, how did you, how did you tackle that how did you prepare for that as yes, uh, my first very first question first question was introduce about yourself and uh, that was just a uh, thing and the very first question was after your engineering you got five years gap what have you been doing that now uh, so uh, w- what i said was uh, after my second attempt i started working in uh, a part for part time in a different coaching academies 
so i told them that i was working because i wanted to ensure that uh, i was not idle and i was into some organization i have some experience working in a team and all that and also uh, in between i was engaged volunteering in ngo so i also mentioned that so a uh, question was from ngo what they do and what was your role in that so i did that for that answer okay and okay. other questions yes 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 go ahead so other questions were Um, oh, since i spoke about ngo they asked what was uh, what is the ngo doing and the thing uh, they, the questions were from whatever i was telling the questions kept coming from that so my first sentence with the answer for the ngo was that they work for reducing the inequalities and after i completed the answer the question was okay what does nabar do to reduce the inequalities uh, and what they do how to do uh, how they help in overcoming poverty and all that and uh, when i was speaking about financial inclusion as one of the answer that was the last thing i stopped and ma'am started asking what is financial inclusion when the answer had the word basic uh, financial services uh, she kept asking what are the basic financial services and again she asked what nabard does for financial inclusion and again the third person again he started from uh, my ngo part uh he again as you said they work for reducing inequalities and that is the term in nabard's uh, mission statement equitable agriculture so what do you mean by equitable agriculture so what how nabard works to promote equitable agriculture and uh, this was the sort of questions that i had in uh, interview uh pavitra the point that I, that i can gather here is driving the interview I don't know if you did it consciously or subconsciously, but uh, yeah, she was leading the interview. Actually, she she knew where to take that uh, interview. Yes, uh, I th- I think the interview panel picked up on your uh, keywords, uh, not knowing that you probably prepared for them, or probably expecting that you might not be prepared for them. Uh, so so that's an advantage that you had in the interview, and it takes a lot of practice, I must say. to actually make sure that whatever keywords you're using they are asking from that those keywords and you're able to answer so that kind of discussion is very fruitful if it get, gets into steam one more point that i gathered was connecting with nabard so as 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 you have been saying that you did not specifically prepare a lot uh, for this exam before the interview how much time did you spend on preparing about nabard on reading about the functions of nabard all those things because sometimes it get, it gets technical you don't want to take any chances so so what all did you do to prepare yes, sir i didn't mu- spend much time only for the prelims and the main part but when it came to interview uh, i think i dedicated um, po- all possible time for that uh, the main thing that i did was the nabard website uh, although the questions were not directly uh, uh, direct from that but whatever they asked it's connected to nabar so i can take points only from uh, their activities so it was nabar website and the annual report uh, that was very useful and especially i should thank your team because i didn't prepare the annual report uh, when i was having mock interview with the team and uh, almost two of the questions were, were from uh, annual report so Uh, one day then i got an idea wh- how wh- what sort of things should be prepared from that annual report before that i saw that as a bulk uh, thing and i don't know what to take from that but from the questions that were asked i was not able to answer i just managed but after that i worked on that so i thank your team for that you so welcome. but for interview i uh, prepared extensively about nava because i knew they i understood that they will be checking how much uh i know about nabard how much i'm interested about their activities and uh, so i prepared extensively about nabard uh, specifically uh, the nabard website uh, everything almost everything from that the annual report and a uh, very uh, short thing about the state for uh, the uh, summary of the state focus paper and the district plan i prepared all that mm mm-hmm. i i think that's a very comprehensive preparation I have two questions in mind concerning the interview. Uh, I don't know if they were asked in the interview or not. First one is uh, they normally tend to ask uh, 
if you if you join nabard today and tomorrow you get into utsc will you leave nabard so did you prepare that uh, question in advance and was it asked in the interview uh, that question was not asked in the interview sir but uh, uh, i i just had an a rough idea of how i'm going to answer but though i was not confident about that answer but i made a rough preparation but that was not asked okay okay and uh, next question is after btech you're trying to get into nabard uh, do you understand or do you have a vision in mind uh, or is it just because nabard is a government job that's why you want to get into it did they ask or did you prepare <laughs> uh, they did not ask me sir but uh, uh, even before appearing for the examination i had that uh, why from civil service to nabard rather than other thing here uh, definitely it is agriculture and rural development which is one of my uh, uh, favorite uh, area and there is also scope for many developmental works here and i think it is a knowledge based organization to some extent comparatively so so i uh, so i wanted to use the knowledge that i have uh to and want to reach greater number of people so nabar provides a platform so th- that's that's the reason yeah i think i think it's more about conviction than about the answer itself and when you're saying it now even without practice i can feel that you might actually believe in it sorry sir sir yes yes pooja ma'am if you have any further questions uh, we can go forward with those Uh, I just wanted to know how does it feel to be on the final list, Pavitra? When you saw your name on the final list after a long struggle of five to six years, how does it feel? I think she cannot hear us. Can, Can you, you hear? hear us? Hello. Hello, sir. Yes. Can you hear us? i think now she can yes puja ma'am please yeah so i was asking uh, after waiting for 5 to 6 years how does it feel to be on the final list when you saw your name how does it feel how do you feel now i really feel happy and i cannot i really feel happy but what i understood was if if we keep working consistently uh we'll get uh, what we uh, look for uh, some way or the other we'll be rewarded Yes. Uh, sure, sure. Congratulations once again for your selection. You totally deserved it. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Pavitra. And the last message that you have, uh, you know, sent to the students that consistently, if you keep working for something, you get the results. I think that's the most important uh, message that the students can take from you. Study. for 5 years staying at home is not easy. Uh, I must I must tell all the aspirants it's a very uh, taxing and a very difficult task and finally uh, you've got the results of that. Yes sir. Thank you Pavitra thanks a lot for being with us uh, I'm very sure your words will be very inspiring for the future aspirants. Thank you so much sir. Thank you.